My name is Erin Mordecai. I'm an assistant professor in the biology department here at Stanford. I'm teaching Bio 2N, the ecology and evolution of infectious disease in a changing world. And this quarter, we're focusing on the Zika epidemic that's going on in the Americas. My name is Jameson Omar, and I'm a sophomore here at Stanford University. My name is Chris LeBeau. I'm a freshman here at Stanford, and I'm planning on studying either HumBio or Bio. My name is Shivarse Ivory. I'm a freshman. Um, I study healthcare access, and I am thinking about majoring in maybe biology, Spanish, or creative writing. My name is Sasha Harrison. I'm a freshman at Stanford this year class of 2019 and um, I'm going to study mathematical and computational sciences. So I'm Anna, I am a freshman. I am thinking about majoring in computer science with the biocomputation track. Hi, I'm Rabia Khan. Um, I'm a senior in biology focusing on ecology and evolution. This course is really about understanding how global change leads to the emergence of new infectious disease epidemics. During this quarter, the students have been reading papers as they're published in the scientific literature. I asked each student to come up with their own paper topic based on either the ecological or environmental or social either drivers or impacts of Zika. My research topic was on the effects of forest cover on disease. My research topic was on antibody cross-reactivity between Zika and Dengue. My research paper topic was healthcare access, um, specifically looking at equality and wealth and how they play into how Zika and epidemics are affected by healthcare access. My research paper topic was the effect on poverty and educational efforts on the transmission of Zika. I looked at the correlation between Zika and abortion. My research paper was on the possible animal reservoirs of Zika. My work often examines how environmental conditions like temperature and land use and water storage affect the abundance of mosquitoes that transmit disease and affect people's interactions with those uh, disease transmitting mosquitoes. So I was studying to see if there was any trends to, uh, in the level of uh, or the amount of density of a forest and if there was any relation of that to Zika. And my paper kind of goes into the facet of what might be playing a role in Zika infections, but not just infections, but Zika, who the people that are showing Zika symptoms or why these mothers are the ones that are having babies that are born with um, severe birth defects. So within Colombia, we found that there are actually there's actually a greater amount of Zika, both confirmed and suspected. I was interested in determining whether people that were living in poverty and um, specifically in the urban slums of Brazil were more at risk for coming into contact with mosquito vectors. I was thinking that because Zika causes microcephaly, a birth defect where the baby is born with an abnormally small skull, and then women who were um, infected with Zika in the first trimester of their pregnancy would choose to abort their baby sometimes. I looked at whether Zika can be uh, maintained in different animal populations that are nearby human populations. And what I found was that monkeys that co-inhabit urban spaces with humans have really high abundance of Zika and are really close to humans, obviously, because they're inhabiting the same space. The fruits of my research showed that people living in slums um, in general tend to come into mosquito vectors more often. It'll be interesting to see not only which countries are impacted, but which people within countries and which segments of the population really are suffering the greatest effects of Zika. Something that's pretty interesting is that Zika is very, very similar to dengue uh, genetically. What I found that was really interesting was that Aedes aegypti really is an urban mosquito. Uh, and that's something that's been proven by a lot of the data that we have. It was really interesting to look into the like reproductive rights of the whole thing. We have this whole population now of babies that were born with microcephaly as a result of Zika, and we just don't know what the outcomes are going to be for those babies and their families. So we're keeping a close eye on the, you know, the social impacts and the economic impacts in terms of microcephaly cases. I always thought like a vaccine for dengue or Zika would be the golden standard for treatment. But uh, my research really shows that that might not actually be the case and we not, might not be able to find a vaccine. You really have to delve deeper into um, studying these uh, animal populations because like, the animal side is also really important in studying um, vector control and like, controlling Zika and other diseases.
it's important to shed light on the fact that women need more reproductive rights around the world. Currently, we can possibly utilize healthcare access um, and healthcare system equality to effectively prevent Zika and other viruses in the future and in the current um, the current epidemic. I think we're definitely only looking at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what Zika is going to change.